What's your rush? What's your hurry? You're an infinite, eternal, indestructible being. What's your hurry? Where are you going? Relax. There is no time like the present. Relax. And you will actually accelerate. That's what we just told you. The paradox is, the more you take time to slow down and relax, the faster things will go. The more you try to speed up, the slower and longer things take. Because you're not living in the present. You're not matching the frequency of your now. Does that make sense? Yes. Go with the flow. Don't swim upstream. That's resistance. Just go with the flow. The current knows where to take you. Trust the speed of the current. Now, sometimes you can accelerate things by divesting yourself of beliefs that no longer work for you. That's fine. That's part of the process. But go with the flow. What the Discovered in the underground vaults of King Ashurbanipal's library in Iraq, this round stone tablet, astonishingly, is approximately 5,300 years old. Initially thought to be of Assyrian origin, further examination using advanced computer technology has unveiled its true lineage. The ancient Sumerian civilization from the Mesopotamian region around 3,300 BC. This artifact, known as the planisphere, is more than just an ancient relic. It's a portal to a fascinating past. The tablet is inscribed with cuneiform script recorded by an ancient Sumerian astronomer. With the aid of modern computational tools, it has been determined that the tablet refers to the night sky on June 29th in the year 3123 BC, according to the Julian calendar. The accuracy of this reference is remarkable. However, the planisphere holds an even more profound secret. It testifies to a catastrophic event, the CFL's impact event that occurred 9,800 years ago. This extraordinary evidence confirms the existence of advanced astronomical knowledge among the Sumerians. It's so crazy. Literally everything about the Sumerians points to them having advanced technology, at least more advanced than what they should have had like in their time, if, if we assume that they're as behind as we say they are. But now, what do you think about the Sumerians? Do you think that they were given that technology, or do you think that they were just like around so long that they developed that technology? You know, like how we have our technological advancements over time. You know, I mean, just look how fast and rapidly growing our technology is these days. So do you think they just kind of hit that point as far as their technology? Do you think that the aliens came down and basically just gave them stuff, expedited the growth in their technology? The technology was used to build the sophisticated buildings we see from the past. There is no way these buildings were carved from a hammer and chisel, nor was this built without the assistance of electrical advanced machines. The detail in these stone carved buildings reflect how advanced the human mind was in these periods of time. These buildings you see are thousands of years old. What we've been told as history does not match with what we see. Well, that's because history is his story. When I started getting into the 1900s, you see orphan trains. That's see, I just made a note about that. What's with all the freaking orphans? Yeah. The incubators, orphans, you know, children. Yeah. 80% child labor, which is interesting because imagine trying to build a castle with children, you know, like that never happen. They would just be playing and messing around and whatever else. But, you know, so with that, you know, where are all these kids coming from? And then America is called the new world. You know, they, they've removed the old world and it's become the new world. And they're exploring the new world. Christopher Columbus exploring the new world and that whole narrative. So what happened in America? Why were all these buildings destroyed here? But then all the buildings are still remaining in Europe. You know, this is a question that people can ask too, but yeah, you see all these babies, you see baby incubators, you see all these things, and then you start to ask, where are all the kids coming from? Where are all the parents? You know, if there's all these babies appearing, shouldn't they have parents? And that's where I started to look at all this and go, this looks almost like we're living in the Truman Show. You know, that's the best way to describe it. And we're taking place in this scenario. There were other scenarios in the past, like you said, but each one had a different timeline, and then now we're here today. And now, as you said, like even Jason with Archaics and everybody else, everybody's unfolding and unpacking everything. And then that's leading down a billion more rabbit holes to kind of start asking questions about, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. This timeline doesn't even mess with this timeline. I mean, yeah, in the U.S., they're literally rewriting history. They're coming up with any reason they can to delete historic figures even if it, i get like people people have done bad shit in the past 
I get that. But it wasn't considered bad at the time in some cases. Like Columbus Day, for instance. Let's just say they're, they're using the atrocities that he committed to just completely erase that history. But how, how are you supposed to learn from history if you erase it? Well, that's the point. You don't. So it being like America being the new world and it being like the Truman Show. I mean, dude, the indoctrination, the propaganda, the literal denial of truth and science and fact and biology, everything that's going on right now. Like, I would not doubt for a minute that this is just, that America is just like a giant psyop at this point. Stop eating that bunch of sugar. It was for your dinner. The whole city, when the water went back, it was all muddy and horrible. All my dead body. Big Anything like it in the whole world. We don't have to come here on a train or stay in a hotel. It's right in our own hometown. Never down, will they? Well, they'd better not. I can't believe it. Right here where we live. Right here in St. Louis. Films are always revealing. <laughs> literally all the time uh that's nuts that was like a world fair that's exactly what it looked like in the photos at the chicago world fair they're talking about the flood and the mud flood come on you can't make this shit up <laughs> i mean you could and they may have but come on there was a society that didn't send its criminals to prisons they turned them into wax statues and displayed them in public as a form of punishment. Um, the Tsarnathians had mastered the art of a process that could suspend a person's life force in wax, freezing them in time without them passing away. The convicted individual would be brought for before the, the High Council of Tsarnath, where they would undergo a ceremony using a secret blend of herbs, ancient chants, and a special wax extracted from rare plants. This wax had unique properties. Once applied to the the skin, it would harden almost instantly, trapping the person's body and, and mind in a state of eternal consciousness. The, the criminal's body would be frozen, completely immobilized, but their mind would remain fully aware. They, they could see and hear everything around them, but would be, would be unable to move, speak, or even blink. Their punishment was to be placed in the, in the Hall of Judgment, a massive wax museum where all criminals were displayed for the public to see for eternity. Oh, so you mean like those Balenciaga models that we're not supposed to talk about. You know, the ones that they encased in wax after they went missing and displayed them at runway shows and in stores that looked unmistakably, exactly, uncannily like the model that they were created after. They think you're incapable of seeing through this. How is it that horse and buggy people constructed these architectural wonders? At the time that they say they were built, all they had were hammers, saws, and basic tools. Does that make any sense to you? Look at all these grand structures and just ask yourself, could we do this in the modern day with those tools? But it gets even scarier. What if the date on these buildings is all wrong? Imagine if that number one wasn't a one at all. Our history could be off by a thousand years. The theory is that an advanced global civilization named Tartaria built these marvels. It often gets left out of mainstream history because they don't want you to question your reality. But many references can be found in old maps and documents. They have even been credited with building the Great Wall of China. If you knew about this, you would not look at it the same ever again. I have to say that this is a theory for obvious reasons, but there is a select group of individuals that have been chosen to survive society in the event of nuclear war natural disaster, or extraterrestrial invasion. It is called the Adam and Eve Project, a contingency operation developed by the CIA to restart civilization. These fall into the category of government plans called continuity of government, and they have been part of the United States national security policy since the Cold War. But it gets even wilder. The plan is to usher this group into safe locations such as nuclear bunkers that are scattered across the world. 
it is said that these locations contain human knowledge, forbidden and common, about how to restart society. Many of these locations are filled with ancient artifacts from historical civilizations. Um, there is different, there's cities underground, there's um, warehouses underground, there's actual homes underground. People built these tunnels and they've built them for decades. There's a lot and elite celebrities, they go down there for parties. underneath the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, California. I was there for a cock party. We walked through the museum, through the garden area, and employees led us to underground tunnels. We had to uh, take an elevator and stairs. Uh, you ha we had to be led there is no way that you can just walk into a tunnel. There, the entrances and the exits are in your face, but there's no way that you can just walk through tunnels. There's, you'll get stuck. You'll um, go deeper and deeper. You won't be able to come back out because it's hard because the tunnels run all different directions for miles and miles and miles and miles. So if you go down the wrong one, you'll get stuck. And it's confusing to turn back around and get back to where you're going. So you have to be led in and out. I think people assume that when you get underground, it's just this dirt and you keep going deeper and there's more dirt and then there's cages of, no, no, that's not how it works. Um, the Playboy Mansion. The Playboy Mansions. I met some really elite people when I was there. I had to do jobs with some elite celebrities. I cannot believe what went on under it. Playboy magazine reports it has just discovered blueprints for a network of tunnels beneath the mansion that supposedly led to the homes of Jack Nicholson, Warren Beatty, James Caan, Would you watch this thing, and Kirk Douglas. Now dig this. A photo from the late 70s allegedly showing an excavation in progress beneath the mansion. And this one shows the newly discovered tunnel plans. Check out the bunny logo on the plywood wall. Best of all, the blueprint. It says this tunnel leads to James Caan's house. This one to Jack Nicholson's. This one to Kirk Douglas's. And this one goes all the way to Warren Beatty's house. All right, so the tunnels underground, I, I understand that being like maybe like fallout shelters or something for the elite. It could also be for trafficking, you know, just privacy, all different things. So under the museum, I could see that being used for lots of things. But the tunnels going from the Playboy Mansion to these other people's houses, like, do you think that is just for, like, an escape? Do you think it's just for convenience? Or do you think that's for trafficking as well? As you figure, if somebody comes into your house and you never see them leave, like, if someone if someone's paying attention to somebody coming into your house and, like, that person never leaves... And I feel like you have probable cause, right? Because there's only one instance of them seeing that person. But if you can tunnel them out through someone else's house where people aren't paying attention, I don't know. I'm, my mind doesn't work like that. <laughs> I don't kidnap people. But uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out, man. It's so weird. It's all so weird. No matter how you spin it.